Yeah. All right, so uh, good afternoon. Today is the 21st of April, 2022, and we're starting Flux Dev, uh, the Flux Dev meeting. So we will start by going through the topic. So the first one is uh, review current development and focus to kind of go through and check if there are any blockers or anything. Um, I think I'll quickly share my screen. Um, let me share. Well, actually, I. Just a sec. Yeah, this is not going to work. Um, yeah, I won't be able to share my screen. If someone wants to share their screen, that would be great. Just to show um, the maintainer's focus, uh, and then we just kind of quickly go through that. Um, sure, I, I don't I think you that. Oh, brilliant. Um, one sec. Okay, here we go. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I think we, we, we kind of changed a bit uh, the release. We had quite a few things uh, tagged for V29, but then we achieved all the things um, and we decided to, to cut the release. Uh, so I think if people are keeping like looking at what we had there before tracked for V29, they're now tracking against uh, V030. A lot of the things there are around Git issues, uh, which again, we're, we're still kind of working through the, the version V.29 should have some fixes around, um, you know, managed transport. But again, we, we still have some upstream uh, things that we, we need to kind of resolve before we get back to that. Um, would you mind going to the GA column, please? Yes. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> right. Uh, I don't have many updates on the ones I'm working on because for the last two weeks I've been uh, working on, on a few other things. Um, is there any anyone that would like to give any update on any of the in-progress items or need any help or anything like that? Well, I'll take that as a no. Uh, what I'll do anyway is uh, before the next session, I'll kind of make sure that all the, the tabs are up to date. So it's easier for us to go through next next session. Um, a quick highlight that I just would like to make, uh, given that we'll be going through the board, is that anything um, you're aware of that is you know, a, a good new start uh, issue, just tag them. So, so folks can you know pick them up. Uh, we're, we're getting quite nice contributions in the last few weeks of things that we created, and then a day or two later, uh, a new contributor came in and started working on it. So, given the amount of things we we need uh, to to kind of get done, it would be great if we start tagging those things more and more. Uh, cool. Um, what is the next item on the list? Start. Let me see. Yes, sorry. Uh, in terms of the documentation update, which is the second item. Well, actually, sorry. Uh, roundup uh, on what's happening on the way to GA. Any any updates on that? Um, one second here. Round of updates on what's happening on the way to GA. Um, yeah. I do not. Not that I'm aware of. Um, I think it was just where we've been just continuing and the last week's focus was on um, primarily on the, the later uh, agenda items on, on the graduation stuff. Yeah, so what I would try to do as well to make, maybe make this conversation easier going forward is if somehow we can just show the items that we, we accomplished between the sessions uh, so we can just quickly go through them. Uh, so I'll put... Do you mind um, 
taking in well, actually kingdom um just put out an action item for me to make sure that we we have an easier way to track changes uh on the way to ga in between meetings that's a good that's a good idea yeah thank you um brilliant so after that documentation updates any any changes any nice changes to the documentation sorry could you clarify what the action item is exactly oh sorry so it's, it's for me to work on a easier way for us to track changes on the items targeted to ga in between meetings so we can pretty much say between the last meeting and now this is what we accomplished right here's a list of the updates since last meeting for ga pretty much Brilliant. So uh, what about documentation updates? Anyone has any uh, updates on that? Um, <clears throat> I know Daniel isn't here, but um, Max, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you and Daniel did a lot of tag teaming yesterday on updating documentation. Well, I wouldn't say it was a lot, but um, yeah, I went over the community roles definition because like while we were in the TOC meeting, I saw that there were some things that like team teams mentioned there that didn't exist and stuff like that. So I went over the whole document and tried to get it in shape. I shouldn't have said a lot of updating. I should have said uh, several items of just clarification. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. All, yeah. Yeah, on, on that point, if any of that could be tagged as good first issue, yeah, that, that would be great. Um, because again, like the more we do that and the more we share the, the load, the easier we get those things done. Brilliant. Um, anything else on documentation? All right. Okay, so... Um, Next item, Scott, any OCI blockers? Yeah, it was, it's really just a question that could be very, very short. <coughs> My understanding, I think we were just, Hit and I were just in a meeting with some other folks, uh, another open source project um, where I think you described Hitta that. The short summary was, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the short summary was we already had uh, a POC the, a working POC, and now that the RFC, for, uh, at least for Hel the Helm um, OCI implementation has actually landed, um, we could go ahead and and start on that. We probably just, probably wouldn't be a lot of work because we just need to probably tweak the POC to make sure it matches the, sorry, the proof of concept to make sure it matches the RFC. Is, did I kind of get that right, Hida? Or, or is there anything else that I'm missing? For OCI work in general? Yeah. Uh, no, the Helm one is, has been, uh, the, the RFC has been merged and it has status implementable. So it's basically waiting for someone to pick it up and to work on it. And I think both Max and Soleil have said that they will uh, start with that work. Then there is the OCI artifact one that is waiting for, I'm not sure what the current state is, but at least the, 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 the RFC is uh, in the finalizing stage. And I think VMware has actually already said that they are committed to update their original PR um, to match the um, proposed RFC. So that's also actively being worked on and in the pipeline to be uh, to become available in well yeah. not so far away i would say that's excellent news and for those listening in it's it's the helm one is to be able to update to to now that now that helm's oci artifact support for helm chart storage is a full feature and no longer an experimental um, and it's exposed to the, the Helm SDK. We, we now are unblocked. We're unblocked to do this. So that's what that one is. And then the other one is uh, the general source controller functionality of being able to um, package um, manifests of different kinds, um, just as as general uh, within OCI. So, for example, uh, plain YAML and customize 
um, overlays optionally. Um, and also Hida, I think, or Max, I think that would extend to Terra, you know, other formats for other controllers that need it, right? Like Terraform plans and, and so on, right? Well, that is my assumption. Anyway, <laughs> that's my understanding. So I guess <clears throat> with that caveat, yeah. Okay, that was it for me. Just wanted to click yeah, Sorry. Uh, all right, so let's jump on the next uh, item. So that's with Kingdom. And it's about the CNCF graduation application, which is a open discussion. Uh, yeah, so I've linked here the uh, application PR that's been open for discussion for a month or so. And uh, the video of the public TOC meeting for anyone that missed it, I uh, was able to go back and watch this. Uh, it was nice discussion, I thought. Um, I only have really one thing to say about the uh, discussion as it's gone on, uh, and that's to say that I'd like to express a vote of confidence in our oversight committee, that I think that they've been doing a fantastic job and uh, bravo, that's, that's my bit. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to contribute to this discussion? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, I agree with that. <clears throat> um, the only thing I want to comment on is that the the um, I, I agree with that that the oversight committee has been doing a brilliant job, but mainly but but not so much <clears throat> due to anything related to what the oversight committee was set up to do. Um, mainly, it was set up to I mean, there's the oversight of the project, yeah, just generally speaking. But the but the actual list of responsibilities for the oversight committee and governance, um, it was really just to have a uh, a point of escalation and to make um, you know, so that if there were disputes between maintainers of projects within Flux, the different sort of repos or projects within Flux that could be resolved. Um, if there was uh, any code of conduct violations, um, lever or you know, um, uh, uh, I guess what do you say, leverage <laughs> uh, against um, <clears throat> any any. Um, any flux maintainer that 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 could be a point of escalation before that goes to CNCF, um, or that could be handled internally before that goes to CNCF, unless of course it's one of those members, um, um, and so on. I think the other responsibilities are all responsibilities that are already responsibilities of maintainers, and and um, and those that has all been very excellent. The only responsibilities that are that are listed there, um, oh yeah, another top level project project level decisions. I don't believe any of those have been required except for one if that I'm thinking of right now, which was the decision to move the flagger project under flux. Um, that was done in a public issue and that was signed off by the oversight committee at, in accordance to the governance. And it was discussed publicly for months. So it's not like it was like behind closed doors or anything crazy like that. Um, I think the thought is this, that as, um, as we had said, last summer, um, there, we need to actually like more clearly either define what, what, what the ongoing need for an oversight committee is and, and, a, and transition that role or, or, um, or do something different. Um, and so the question right now we're being asked by the TOC is, um, you know, really about, about, uh, about this project not being under one company. And it's certainly not. We have uh, maintainers from seven different, seven different organizations, including uh, one uh, independent person and one independent person. Um, and so the, the thought is that um, there, are, there are ways of, I mean, I worked a lot on the governance to start for bootstrapping and, and, and as it is now. And um, we drew from a lot of, we drew from many different projects, including um, the experience that I've had on the Helm project too. And so that's worked out really well. I guess the question is, we have three people from WeaveWorks soon to be just, I think two people from WeaveWorks on the three person oversight committee. Um, 
that's right now a, a, a top level decision making group. Um, that doesn't necessarily, I think we're at a crossroads of maturity here as a project. Um, that, that's all. And, and I think that's what the, that is related to the TOC's questions for us is, are we going to go ahead and do whatever transition we had planned to do? Um, and, what, and what do we want to do there uh, or, or not? And so we need to, that needs to be decided. It ultimately has to be decided by, or ultimately decided by the oversight committee, which is uh, Michael, Stefan, and Hitta, um, because that's how what governance says. Um, <clears throat> and the, the main question is, is there a concern that if the oversight committee were to transfer okay, so, to, uh, to like was saying uh, now we some touch you could you mute if you're was sorry. That oh I, sorry I thought someone was yeah um yeah so so basically it's it's I think it's this is that we have several there are several choices one is to keep things exactly as they are certainly the the CNCF and and, and no one will can tell this project how to govern itself. That's not that's not uh, that's not part of the job. The job the job of the TOC though is to assess maturity um, and dependability of the project as a standalone project if they're going to stamp graduated on it um, as going through the, the CNCF graduated project program. So um, the the question here is we could we could either keep it could either be kept as it is or transition in some way. And if it were to transition, it could be one of several ways. Uh, one is that the oversight committee becomes really the role of it is not at, no longer a point of decision making escalation, but primarily um, a uh, um, an advice to advise and 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 over and have oversight and steering of the project and the and one of the roles of all maintainers of the flux project would be to regularly check in with the oversight committee and. Um, including on meetings like this and, and, and for all important decisions, but they would not be the decision-making body themselves. They would be informing those people. And several of the oversight committee members are also maintainers. So they would be part of that decision-making process, but with everyone else. So it would be, it would be uh, the other uh, organizations would have a say uh, in that, but would, would be required to, to get, get advice from, from that group. So that's one way. The other way is to just not have that at all and say, okay, well, we're going to go the route of many other projects where we just, for, for those types of top project level decisions, we require a super majority vote for them. And we just do a two thirds vote. And then we have something like uh, votes limited to two per affiliated organization or something like that. Um, that's what the Cortex project does. Um, and that's what a number of other projects do that have very simple um, voting like that, that's, that's uh, I think would constitute a, um, both of those ways would work. And there may be other options too, but those are two tried and true options that we could choose from, so. Well, I'm not saying this is the forum to, to decide that, I just, yeah. Sanskar, do you wanna go next? Yeah, so uh, if, if you have something to say related to the governance community, uh, please go ahead because mine is not related to that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so my um, main concern, I guess, with the proposed change in structure is that it might raise the bar for the addition of new projects uh, because once you get to the point where you've added a new project, and someone is made a maintainer of that project right now that gives you uh, that maintainer authority inside of the project mostly um, and also standing with the community um, but it sounds like uh, you know such a change in structure might serve to limit the number of maintainers that we can add if we would like to control the vision and uh, direction of the project um, or or if uh, it's, it's to remain coherent that's my main concern, I think. Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention one other option. Do you mind if I list it? I think it would. It may take care of your concern. Maybe not. But uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the 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 other option is um, is to say that we we choose from a um, a group of maintainers on on one project, perhaps the central project, 
within Flux right now, which is Flux slash, sorry, Flux CD slash Flux 2. And those maintainers are the point of escalation. Um, and we, we, um, we leave it at that. That way there's that risk that Hitta had mentioned the other day is less, less of a risk um, that it shouldn't then raise the bar for new maintainers. It may raise the bar for maintainers of the Flux 2 project, but I think that we already have a pretty high bar for that, don't we? So, so that's just one other question. Yeah. Uh, sorry, would it be worth to put those options somewhere so so folks can you know go through them and and maybe ask more questions and and so on, and then we can kind of evolve the discussion. Yes. So uh, that was actually what I was going to say is that um, that's going to go somewhere. Uh, and right now the maintainers are all discussing this in the Flux Maintainers channel, um, which is a private channel, which is totally acceptable and makes sense for this kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll put those together. And then it's really, you know, it's, I think it's really up to the, uh, the current steering committee to decide what they, what, if anything, they want to do. Um, and they will, I'm sure, will take feedback from all the other maintainers to make that decision. Yep, I agree with all of that. Oh, oh, and the action item is that um, Daniel and I met about this yesterday and talked over these options. I'm just trying to summarize them right now um, because this was brought up in the meeting and it is good to be public because why not? Um, <clears throat> at least the, at least this part of it. And, um, and then I have the action item to flesh that out. So I will do that and I will keep everybody posted as we have been talking about this over the last day or so. Brilliant, awesome, thank you. Um, Sanska, do you want to go for your question? Yeah, I had a few doubts regarding uh, the current role of how Flagger is integrated into Flux. So, like, the adoption of Flagger into Flux, I mean, that happened a long time before I joined. Uh, but from what I can see is that Flagger is going to graduate alongside Flux, right? Uh, as in, when Flux graduate, that, that in the project Flux 2 and the GitOps toolkit, the those those entire components graduate with Flux, right? And and so does Flagger. So that was actually but, one of the questions that the TFC asked that we did not <clears throat> we did not I give a full answer think, to. Yet. Yeah, I think there is a misperception in what graduation means in a CNCF context. Graduation to CNCF means that you, as an open source project, no matter what 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 projects fall under the umbrella. Um, um, is mature in a way in how it's steered and in a way that it, it basically is able to continue to live if a certain party drops out of it, etc. But it's not about maturity of the subprojects themselves per se. There's an kind of, um, um, how do you say, it? there is an, an well, you need to adhere to certain rules around CI and other, other things, but your product itself doesn't, for example, need to be GA. So as long as Flagger adheres to the governance rules and as long as the CI setup is properly, then um, the fact that it's, for example, not 100% part of the toolkit is not of a concern because graduation for the yeah. CNCF means that your project is viable and that it has a viable future, basically, and not that, yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, my concern wasn't um, that actually. My concern was uh, the fact that Flagger did not go undergo a security review. So like the one which happened with Ada Logics. So Flux and I think the, the GeoTK components, they went through the security review, but Flagger didn't. So that could be a potential blocker. Uh, that, that's what my concern was. Because right now, the like according to the meeting that happened uh, for graduation, they, they recommended that we... Uh, link up with the tax security uh, working group. So, and like, we, I mean, we are pretty confident about where we are security wise when, when it comes to Flux and the other components because we had that ind independent audit, right? But we didn't have that for Flagger. So that's what my concern was about. So correct, yeah. Flagger did not go through an independent security review yet. Yeah, that's true. And 
and potentially that kind of aligns with the next item, which, yeah, which is about tax security, self-assessment, promoter tenancy. So yeah. just kind of recap a bit on that. Um, when we we went through the the audit last year, I think it was in November, um, we the day scope did not cover motor tenancy, at least not to a depth that you know we would we need. And the recommendations were that we reassessed the architecture and implementation for motor tenancy, especially the changes that, that are still on RFC stage, and and then. You know, we assess that with some security experts, potentially with tag security or with independent, you know, uh, companies. Uh, so based on that, and also because that was brought up recently again on the meeting with the CNCF, um, I started creating the, the self-assessment. Um, and the security self-assessment is, is kind of a crucial step before you can actually apply for a tag security assessment. Uh, so you need to make sure that you, you've done your homework before you kind of go to them and ask them to, to help with that process. So I started a document um, going through that. A lot of things on the, the self-assessment is, is kind of generic, to be honest. Um, but I wanted, you know, for folks to, to kind of have a look. Um, you probably, if you don't have access to the document, just request and, and I'll, I'll give uh, the, the access. Um, there are a few things that I want to add into that document that we were not done yet, especially from multi tenancy perspective. So I created a multi tenancy item in Flux. So I'll, I'll add to the list later. I probably won't remember that, but I won't find that quite quickly now. Um, but basically, that tracks where we are with multi tenancy. So basically, we have you know, multi tenancy working production for a long time. Um, but we might be missing some documentation, especially to, to help users make the right decisions when it comes down to, you know, deployment models and, and so on. And that also would uh, help us do the threat modeling because that, that, that would, you know, would be a step before we, we kind of can go and say, okay, within this scenario, these are the threats that we worried about. These are the things that we should, uh, you know, change, or these are the sets you need to have in place, and and so on. Um, so I'll add the link here on the on the agenda, so folks can actually also look into that. But it would be great if folks could go around the self assessment and just see if there's anything else we can add. Um, there's quite a few things that are not security related, but it's about the project. And, and just kind of keeps the context to the security folks that will be, you know, reviewing this later. So, you know, they, they ask things like use cases, they ask things like um, how integrated is Flux into the, the ecosystem. So I put a few details, I sh you know, I kind of linked our ecosystem page, but maybe there are more that we can put that that would give the, the, the right context. So again, this is more like, an invitation for folks to go through the, the document and help us um, improve it before we, we apply that to, to the tax security. Uh, and just kind of highlighting this as well, tax security takes quite some time to get around to, to, to do the assessments because it's, it's based on you know folks volunteering to, to work on those um, assessments and, it, and there's also a queue. So, I just wanted to apply now so we have plenty of time um, where we get all the things done, especially towards getting um, Flux GA, uh, which is on the board that we, we, we talked about before. Um, to be clear, Paolo, just because there, there yeah. can be easily confusion for folks, um, this is primarily for, for the road to uh, Flux GA, the V2.0.0, not um not for cncf graduation this would not be required yeah, for cncf graduation exactly and actually it's even beyond that so yeah. um yeah. we we removed the new improvements and so on uh, of mode tenancy for flux j um so it's not even tracked on that board ah. um yeah. so we are working on that but after the j uh, happens after the flux j takes place 
because again, we, we want to get a few things done before we actually improve uh, or change uh, drastically what we have already in place for most tenancy. We might do a few things before. So for example, improve the documentation and, and so on, which will benefit everyone, but we don't expect to invest a lot of time of the maintainers on this before J, uh, Plex J. <laughs> We, we need some uh, code names, you know, so we, it's easier to, 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 to refer to Plux G and CN, uh, CNCF uh, graduation. Um, cool, that's, uh, that's it on that point. Any, any questions on that? I just uh, thought that was good, how you brought up the ecosystem as, as part of the problem uh, or part of the question, at least um, how uh, reality on the ground is we had a uh, ecosystem integrator who really was insisting on having multi-tenancy ready for their use case uh, to their satisfaction. And uh, so that really constrained the way where we couldn't just wait six months for SIG tag security to get around to our question. We had to come up with a solution. It makes sense what you're saying that this is no longer uh, really a question for GA or 2.0.0 because we have these ecosystem partners and we have to uh, make sure that they're happy uh, that we're not going to break their use case with whatever changes we might make um, of course within the confines of keeping things secure so yeah and that, that, that's a very good point and and one of the things that I actually try to highlight in the document as well is that multi-tenancy as a feature doesn't have as go to to fit all the different scenarios out of the box like you know it's, it's not like a prescriptive way like you need to do this and that that's it but actually and this is where the recommendations that we need to put in place are is like if you want to use multi-tenancy on this scenario you need to do this if you want to do on that other scenario if you need like higher isolation across tenants and stuff like that you need to do something else so i want to expand that on the documentation as well so we we are clear but in theory we have all the pieces of the puzzle already in place it's just a matter of documenting it and just to kind of pick up on, on what sanskar mentioned as well i think we potentially could use the same application to also cover flagger um, we might just need to do a self-assessment for that as well. But yeah, I can pick that up with, um, with Sanskar uh, later. Do, uh, do you mind, Kingdom, just to add uh, another action item for me uh, on that, um, which would be secure self-assessment for Flagger. And we kind of put that on, I'll put that on the board after. Cool, um, brilliant. Uh, next point is Max. Um, yeah, so you mentioned that you, you run into some uh, issues with source controller uh, 0 0.24. It is panicking due to a new pointer uh, difference. Uh, do, do you want to chat about that? Uh, yeah, so uh, while you were talking, I was trying to reproduce the issue. So the good thing is I couldn't reproduce it. Um, with just plainly running the controller, creating a home repository, which I guess is expected because the test didn't catch it. Um, however, I can reproduce it with the way like data IQ installs resources. Um, and um, maybe that way, how we do it causes that. Like I just, just the second I saw like at first, like we, we, we create, the home repository resources ourselves uh, from a certain Git repository on disk. All the home repositories have a size set, like in the status. And then we make Flux manage it by creating a customization that picks these up from an actual repository. And from that point on, I see like all the home repositories get patched and then the artifact size gets removed. So, um, yeah, um, I guess I or uh, Jorg, who uh, thankfully stepped forward to fix this bug, um, can try to find a like a smallest case to reproduce this. 
Wait, what did you say? Did you say that an, an external service from your side then patches the ARM repositories again and then the field is removed? So, um... You said first there are, first, or at least from the moment my brain switched on listening to you. <laughs> um, you said the Helm repository is originally created, is that right? Yes. Then, then it has a size, then uh -huh. a customization goes and does something else, then uh -huh. the Helm repository is patched, that removes the field on the status, isn't the thing that's patching the surface running an older version of the CRD and this um, throwing it through a different JSON model than the controller is and thereby removing the fields, um, which of course still makes the controller vulnerable to the fact that someone removes the field. Um, but logical wise, it wouldn't matter for most of the Flux people because they are not removing fields or at least they're working with a, a, a client that knows about the right version. Hmm. So the CRD version that we're using is always the same, right? So I have like, we, we have a CLI to install our product and that also like creates, like it bootstraps Flux, right? So at in the first step, um, the Helm repositories don't have any connection to a Git repository or like a customization, right? So we, we just create them from the, from the person's computer installing the product using a Go client, uh, client Go. And then um, as soon as we have installed Flux on the cluster, we let it take over all the HAM repositories through a customization. So actually like the manifest files that Flux is taking over are the exact same ones that we created earlier using client Go it's just that now they are managed through Flux, right? And a Git repository. Um, but like, I, I mean, the customization leads to labels being added. I still don't know what's really causing this field to be removed, but the version should be the same, like- Field managers. Process. I think it's something specific around the fact that you're basically patching or pushing the object and it's not, well, something in a control of flux. I think something around either server side apply dealing with um, field managers or something, or basically figuring out the magic between who's managing the fields and then removing the stuff as, as the customized controller does, or something else basically truncates it. But I think, and that's probably also why our tests continue to pass. <laughs> that it's very specific to your injection stage, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I, I figure the same. Like, it's, Nonetheless, it's we should fix it specific. on the controller code, but that means that the blast radius is uh, much less than exactly. I originally thought. <laughs> yeah, right. Me me too. Like, I'm, I'm kind of relieved that <laughs> this is kind of uh, particular to this certain situation. So, um, yeah. That's, um, I guess that's it. The fix is pretty straightforward, I guess. Brilliant, thank you very much for the context that Max, uh, hopefully we, we get to the bottom of that uh, sooner rather than later. Um, awesome, so the next uh, agenda item is with Scott. It's around the preview of upcoming Helm OCI related functionality. Do you want to talk us through it? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, I was taking a note. Uh, I am back now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I was actually taking a note on that issue itself. So, so there's two there's two pieces, and it's really simple. It's it's pretty simple. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sorry about the uh, cold, but uh, everybody. Um, one is. Uh, the ORS client that provides the functionality for Helm's OCI integration um, does not currently allow to, um, to, to interact with a, a, uh, an, insecure, an insecure registry. Um, it doesn't have the uh, a TLS, you know, insecure TLS skip verify flag 
um, like a, that's in Coop Control for um, uh, or in uh, the Helm repositories um, uh, <clears throat> functionality. There is a PR for that, which is basically finite. It, it, there's a PR for that, and that is pretty ready to go. There's really just a conversation around the naming, um, whether I think currently it should it was named just dash dash and secure. Uh, and the proposal is that it just be named the same. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, that it, that it keep consistent naming. But um, uh, in any case, once that is, that uh, is, I think, paired with one other piece of functionality, um, uh, which is uh, um, a CA uh, cert. And that is this issue. Um, I just happen to have that on hand. Um, I can find the other one and add it later, but um, you know, configuring a, a certificate author certificate authority file um, really for yeah for um, verifying um, the cert. So that's something that Helm currently has in for repositories, and Flux has that functionality for Helm, um, but but not for the OCI side of things. So those two pieces are are being worked on right now by by Sule, who's also Part of the Flux team, a Flux maintainer, um, by Andy Block from Red Hat, and by me. So once those are set, uh, uh, well, also the, the the first piece of functionality I mentioned was is already done by by someone else in the community, uh, largely. So once those two are in, um, I'll keep you all, us all posted on when we're planning to get those into the, uh, a future Helm release, and um, we can kind of get prepped on the Flux side for supporting those options in our. Um, in our custom resource definition. Brilliant. That was really um, it. That might have been a, just a heads up to Hida, but also anyone else who's inter interested in this side of things for the Helm controller. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. I actually opened the links and I'll, I'll go through that after this. Okay. Uh, brilliant, thank you for that. Uh, I think we've run out of uh, agenda items. Is there any ad hoc items anyone wants to bring up or talk about? No, just accept that like Max, that's the, like the cutest thing in the universe. I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was kind of distracted. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Would you mind repeating? Oh, I was just saying that's the cutest thing in the universe. Huh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all. I, I love kids and I think it's so nice. It's so great when they can be part of our, our lives as well as when we're working or not. So I love it. Yeah. I had my daughter. Oh, she's on, extremely and tired and exhausted. So she's yeah. crying all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're wonderful. Anyway, that was my only comment. <clears throat> Everything's great. Brilliant. Uh, well, so if no one wants to bring up anything else, uh, we could uh, end the meeting slightly early then. So, well, thank you very much, everybody, and have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 bye.